I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The day after the election, almost two weeks ago, Dr. Brene Brown, social worker, researcher, and professor, released a podcast entitled Strong Backs, Soft Fronts, Wild Hearts. She recorded this uh, on the eve, or at the end of the day of the election, not knowing what was going to happen. By her own words, her decision to record the episode was out of a need to address her own swirling feelings of uncertainty, anxiety, and stubborn hope. For those of you who might be ready to roll your eyes about the fact that I'm about to talk about Brene Brown for a little bit, the notable shame and vulnerability researcher, have no fear, there's also a Star Wars quote coming a little bit later. While processing the unknowns of the election and the potential fears of natural, national backlash, which we were all expecting, no matter which candidate was declared the winner, as we saw in our own city by the boarded up buildings all around us, out of fear for the outbreak of violence, Brene shared a quote from a friend of hers named Dr. Joan Halifax, who's a Buddhist teacher and a Zen priest which said, all too often, our so-called strength comes from fear and not love. Instead of having a strong back, many of us have a defended front, shielding a weak spine. In other words, we walk around brittle and defensive, trying to conceal our lack of confidence. If we strengthen our backs, metaphorically speaking, and develop a spine that is flexible but sturdy, we can risk having a front that is soft and open. It was this quote that inspired the title of the podcast that day and is a major theme of one of her books called Braving the Wilderness. Strong backs, soft fronts, to which she adds, and wild hearts. And for her, this is a way of understanding true belonging. Far too often, our culture has prioritized to lead with armored fronts, with strong force, with aggression, and with a strength that is far more rooted in fear than in love. While we think our virtually impenetrable armor will save us in the end, it debilitates us. It's impossible to make eye contact with another human being when you have an ironclad helmet on. And it's hard to shake someone's hand when the armor wrapped around each finger makes it impossible to move. And one certainly cannot share one's heart steeped in the love of God when a perfectly fitted and fine-tuned breastplate prohibits anything from getting out or in. While Brene is an Episcopalian, she does not claim to be a theologian. But in this case, she sure does sound a lot like Paul the Apostle, the writer of our epistle to the Thessalonians this morning. Rather than building so much time in armoring up our front side, we need to focus on building up our back muscles and flexibility. We must practice and find a way to stand upright, firmly rooted in our own understandings of who God created us to be and our belief in Jesus Christ. For Brene, this is how she finds true belonging and find our strength rooted in love rather than hate. And for Paul, this is how we become children of the light, rather than to dwell as children of the dark. Our epistle reading for today from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians has quite an apocalyptic feel to it. So many of the early Christian communities were very focused on the second coming of Christ, assuming that it would come during their lifetimes. While this passage certainly has those tones, 
the passage itself is actually focused on how the church in, in Thessalonica is to live or was to live in their here and now, which we too can translate for our own contexts. Paul essentially is saying, we don't know when the Lord will return. It is as inevitable as labor pains are when a woman is pregnant. He's encouraging them not to burden themselves with trying to figure out when that will happen. It will happen. Rather, Paul reminds them that as followers of Jesus, they are children of the light. And that is what they should be concerning themselves with. They need to spend their time and, and, and their energy in remaining in the light and helping others do the same. Paul is not talking about a specific end time, rather focusing on a specific way of being in the world, in the present. For Paul, to walk as a child of the light is to walk in distinct contrast to the worldly powers and dominions of darkness to distance oneself from hierarchies based on merit, social status, national power, imperial hopes, or any kind of human construct that armors one's front. Paul plays with great imagery that we have come to know as the armor of God. And he knows what he's doing by using images and tools of earthly human war and pairing them with practices that are deeply rooted in Jesus. For us, Paul's words can be translated as, stop investing in powerful armor made of Kevlar and night scopes. Stop trying to find your strength in fear as Yoda in the Phantom Menace episode one of Star Wars says to young Anakin Skywalker, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Stop preparing for battle in the dark. You are not of the dark. God has given you greater tools than debilitating armor. God has given us soft fronts of faith, love, hope, and salvation. We belong to the day. We belong to resurrection. All of this is easier said than done. Brene Brown is very open about the fact that no matter how often her research leads her to conclude that taking off of our armor is the best way to engage in authentic relationships, experience love, joy, and true connection, she's the first one to armor back up when things get hard. She highlights that there is a constant practice to recognize when we are tempted to put that armor back on, or maybe when we've put it back on and we didn't even realize. Almost, if not all, of our great Jedi heroes of Star Wars have flirted with, have danced with, and fled to the dark side at times. Sure, this makes for a great story, but the reason we identify with it is because it's a very human story. Our passage today concludes with Paul encouraging the Thessalonians by saying, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, indeed, as you are doing. Paul is not naive enough to think that living a life following Jesus is easy. It's anything but. This sentiment of encouraging one another and building each other up is a constant theme in the Pauline letters. We cannot be children of the light in isolation. 
We cannot walk that road alone. If we've learned anything during this pandemic, it is that we are not created to live and thrive in isolation. We are not healthy. We are not our best. And this pandemic has seemed to increase the darkness in our world, has it not? And we're in a time where we're literally losing the time of day in which we can dwell in the physical light as we approach this winter season. There are so many of us struggling with darkness in new and, quite frankly, terrifying ways. Especially as we're all going to see restrictions tighten up tomorrow in our city and state. And yet, at the same time, we are also finding insanely creative ways to stand firm and to walk in the light. We have found ways to gather and to worship. We have found ways to reach out and connect beyond the physical lines that we're used to and perhaps prefer. Our light can be extremely contagious if we're willing to reach out and connect with those around us. Many of us may be desperate for some light of Christ to permeate the darkness of the world that has penetrated us. Many of us need to reach out and share our light with somebody who has been in the back of our minds, wondering how they are doing. They are likely a phone call away. And that light transmits through the phone. It transmits through the internet. It transmits through a card. This is a time when we as the church, as Christians, need to have strong backs and soft fronts. We need to embrace the gifts of faith, love, hope, and salvation we have been given. And we need to be willing to share that with those around us. We need to find our strength in the love of Jesus and not in the hate of this world. And most importantly, we need to have a wild heart of belief that God is bigger than all of this. And God is not destined us for wrath, but for salvation. Now, if I was allowed to sing in a public setting right now, I would make us all join together in a chorus of a song that I wonder if it's been running through your mind as it has been mine as I've been playing with this text. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen.